Show me someone who hates on the Yaris, and I'll show you someone who scoffs at colorful sunsets. And I try, and I try for red light when I'm driving you, baby. But that 1.5 liter with BVT I drives me crazy, baby. You have to be jaded not to like the vehicular equivalent of Little Mac. The toughest doorstop on both hemispheres. The Yaris is an evolved Echo. A distinction made for Americans because the Yaris had a soft launch in the USA as the Toyota Echo. And we bought enough of them that Toyota told us Echo's real name after a few years. Are us Yanks that sensitive that we need our own special names? Whatever. The Yaris is the Tercel's replacement. And the Tercel was wearing Sideshow Bob-sized shoes. The Tercel was harder and tougher than a box of art room erasers. Toyota executed the Tercel's replacement like Superman Returns. Simple, familiar structure with the latest technology. Coil-on plug ignition, double cams, timing chain, electric steering, take no chances ignition advance. Then torque every bolt tighter than a DCI snare line so the engine is sealed more than a low-down husband's lips. Then forsake the interior. Windy windows, manual door mirrors, they don't even have those Apple II joysticks on the side. You have to roll the window down and push the mirror glass around yourself with your hand. A digital fuel gauge that has eight bars. A 2000s flip phone had more resolution. It's alright though, because the 11 gallon fuel tank lasts all week because this auto box Yaris gets 38 miles per gallon and the manuals get 40 all day. Well, what's the easiest way to keep a car component from braking? Don't include it. No center armrest. No lumbar, no HVAC logic controls, or climate control for that matter. No tachometer. Just put your foot down, one wheel peel, and let the firewall mounted ECU sort it all out. The seats? Mmm. They don't have lumbar, they have anti-lumbar. They, they suck, honestly. They're city bus uncomfortable. Like everything else about the Yaris, they're made to be durable and long-lasting. 2008 Toyota Yaris. A car littered with good reviews for reasons that can only be explained through cultural evaluation. The Yaris endures like a swallowed piece of gum that never gets digested. Technically, the Yaris is successful. It's a successful product. Although, I don't know if I would call it popular. The new 4th gen Yaris is expected to go on market this spring. And yet, 2008 remains the best-selling year for the Yaris in the United States moving 102,328 units. In a sea of angry face sedans, the 2008 Yaris looks more like a go-getter who's just happy to make Eagle Scouts, as opposed to the 2020 Yaris, which will look like a dick-slinging club owner who just found out he's gonna be a father. This feels like the apex of cars from the mid-2000s. This is something soft and streamlined. A subcompact monument to sophisticated blandness. Its appeal is in its every car sensibilities. This is just here to be passed down, to be inoffensive, to be meaningful to someone in ways that have nothing to do with how it functions. Which isn't to say it's incapable of being satisfying, but rather that it doesn't come across as anything that was designed with car enthusiasts in mind. This isn't a car for mom's boyfriend with his pacemaker that throws up engine codes and a Monte Carlo that hasn't left the garage since Savage Garden. It's easier to imagine this in the garage of a more pragmatic driver, someone who still believes in holding on to something until it no longer functions rather than trading up the moment that thing becomes outdated. This Yaris is the three-door model, featuring a four-speed automatic transmission with a torque converter, a front-wheel drive layout, a 1.5-liter four-cylinder transverse engine with VVTi, that's Toyota's variable valve lingo. The designation is 1NZFE. To be more specific, the 1NZFE is the 1.5 liter auto cycle variant possessing the same born stroke as its sister variants, but with lowered compression ratio that sits at 10.5 to 1. That's still pretty high. And the power output is in the ballpark of 109 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 104 pound-feet of torque at 4,200 RPM. Redline sits at around 6,400 RPM for this particular engine designation. While you get power steering and analog brakes, traction control is absent like wedding rings at a key party. But hey, whatever. The 1NZ FE is part of the line of NZ engines. 
a series of naturally aspirated aluminum head and block water-cooled straight fours with sequential fuel injection and VVTI variable valves. This gives you the sensation of biting into a York peppermint patty and being transported to sixth grade graduation. No modifications to speak of here and the radio and CD player don't work right now. But the Oxport still does, so you can inflict your musical tastes on whoever's riding shotgun. Because nothing screams captive audience road trip like listening to This is a Long Drive for Someone with Nothing to Think About by Modest Mouse. There are snow tires in the front and all seasons on the rear. I had the same setup on my Toyota Echo. What that does is it makes the rear step out if you slam on the brakes in the snow. Andrew's parents bought this car used in 2011 with 11,000 miles on it. It came from Connecticut and they drove it to California and back three times. So by the time it was ready to be passed down, Andrew got it with 124,000 miles on it. And it's currently sitting around 180,000 miles on the odometer. Andrew and all of his brothers took their driving tests in this car. Because you ace the parallel parking portion of the driving test in this. It's so tiny. Andrew doesn't plan on getting rid of this Yaris until it dies. And that's going to be a while. This Yaris is going to keep hanging around until it decides it doesn't feel like starting anymore. And the cost of fixing it is no more justifiable than paying to see Motley Crue after 1996. There have been some repairs over the years. The rear shock towers have been replaced. The solid axle rear was bent, but not bent seriously enough to be worth replacing. Weird thing is the hubcaps fly off of this all the time. I never had that problem in my Echo, but, but according to Andrew, that is a problem with the Yaris. I guess maybe it has fatter tires on it and the tires somehow are gripping the edges of the wheel covers and popping them off. Uh -huh. Andrew also had the Takata airbag recall done, so good on him for that. Oh, excuse me, there are some minor modifications. It has these roof racks, and the rubber gasket on the rear hatch came off, but he just fixed that with flex tape. Yes, this is a small car with 100 horsepower, but you're going to be flooring it a lot. And you're going to have to plan for every highway merge way in advance, because you're going to be going 0 to 60 in about 12 seconds. According to Andrew, this has maybe gotten up to 100 miles an hour once. And that's because it fights you all the way past 70. It doesn't want to go fast. It's a kid who hates roller coasters. And yet it's very much like a roller coaster ride in the sense that the roller coaster begins and ends in the same place. You start slow, you end slow. The torque converted four-speed auto allows you to lock it into drive three, two, one. So you do have control over every single gear because it's a traditional automatic. Doesn't do anything funny. Andrew also had a transmission flush at around 160,000 miles. Did it really need it? I don't know. It's a Yaris. Toyota Yaris. It's the answer to the question, gee, I wonder what John Tesh drives. And that question is what kept the Yaris from being a number one hit in the United States, instead of the top 20 head bobber that it was. For the same price on the used market, you could have gotten a Corolla with more room, a bigger engine, and seats that won't make you feel elderly and still get 38 miles per gallon if you get a manual and take it easy with no cargo. The Yaris's blandness inside killed its sales potential. I think because of Walt Whitman. Walt Whitman wrote Leaves of Grass in 1855 and codified the American experience, and in doing so, sawed a bread knife between the North American, UK, Europe, and by extension, Japanese views on the self and possessions. That's capital T in the, capital S in self, signifying those things as anthropomorphized concepts. Walt Whitman celebrated nature, again capital N nature, or mother nature, in Leaves of Grass, which was an epic poem, and said how to raggedly summarize the whole damn book. It's all for me! I just ate a cornucopia of mushrooms, and the earth is presenting, engorged, and ready for entry! I'm Walt Whitman. You are the earth. Every organism lived, decomposed, sacrificed itself so you can be here now. Isn't that fantastic? The UK and most of Europe would interpret this global mortal servitude as something to mourn or feel guilty over. But Whitman said no. This is something to celebrate and accept and enjoy and laugh because it's yours. You deserve it. You deserve all of this. The sky, you deserve it. The mountains, you deserve them. The grass, you deserved it. The trees, you deserve it. The animals, you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve everything because you 
are. And this artistic work, written over 150 years ago, grew invisible roots in the American psyche. Americans believe we're all millionaires in waiting. And yes, intellectually, we know the odds are ludicrous. But emotionally, we want to believe we'll all get there and enjoy all those nice things which we deserve. So in the meantime, we will act as if we're rich. And if we can't afford the real nice things, we'll have faux versions which we can afford. That's why there's fake wood in a K car. We can't pork nature yet, but here's a blow up doll on which we will practice. What are you saying, Mr. Regular? Are you saying put fake wood inside of a Yaris? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying or fake carbon fiber, or some upholstery over the doors that mimics Alcantara leather. Because I deserve to feel like a winner. I am not an Earth, nor an adjunct of Earth. I am the mate and companion of people, all as immortal and fathomness as myself. They do not know how immortal, but I know. Every kind for itself and its own. For me, mine, male and female for those that have been boys and that love women, for me the man that is proud and feels how it stings to be slighted, for me the sweetheart and the old maid, for me mothers and the mothers of mothers, for me lips that have smiled, eyes that have shed tears, for me children and the begetters of children, undrape, you are not guilty to me, nor stale not discarded. I see through the broadcloth and gingham whether or no, and I am around, tenacious, acquisitive, tireless, and cannot be shaken away. If I look like a man who has kids, and I don't know what EDM is, then I miss you for bliss, this ain't a Yaris. Oh wait, it is? Okay, cool. Otherwise, this review would have been really weird.